<clears throat> we do live in uh, amazing times, and uh, it's anything but boring, right? I believe everything Dan just said. He, he quoted me accurately. I believe God's going to turn things around. Our part is to obey, stand, believe, not do his part. He's going to come and do what only he can do. He will bring the revival, the awakening. He is already doing much behind the scenes to prepare. He is exposing, exposing, exposing. And if he has to use people that don't even know him or pretend to know him, like Elon Musk, he doesn't care. All you hear is just use anybody. But he is exposing, exposing, exposing. And that's what many started saying in, in 2020, 2021, that we were going into a season where God would begin to expose the evil and the corruption. The only thing surprising me about any of that is just how deep and how profound it is, the evil in this nation. Don't go there, right? <laughs> Sometimes I, I just no, I won't go there either. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna use three passages tonight. I don't know exactly where we will end with this, but I think what I want to share tonight is a good uh, encapsulation of where we are in the nation, uh, not in the sense of how off track the nation is, but but where we are and what God's doing, what he's been doing. And, and uh, it's an encouraging word. We can all use a little encouragement, right? But let's start in First Chronicles 12. By the way, Cece tell, says hello to everyone. She would love to be here, but she doesn't travel with me a lot because she runs the ministry and stays really busy back on the home front but she does send her love and greetings especially to any family members I don't know if any of them are here or not they don't come hear me very much for her, her family but that's alright no but uh, this she was for those of you who don't know she was raised just a few miles down the road in Morton so many many good things have come into my life from Mississippi First Chronicles 12, a very familiar verse. The sons of Issachar, men who understood the times with a knowledge of what Israel should do. How many of you have heard that verse before? I can't imagine that anybody in a charismatic church hasn't heard that verse, especially if they're prophetic at, at all. Most of the time, the context of this verse is not talked about. And it takes on even more significance when, when the entire passage is looked at. Because these mighty warriors, people that uh, ran with David, and became his mighty men, uh, some of whom were the sons of Issachar that were prophetic and because of that could discern the times and knew what to do. But the entire chapter, it says, is about those who helped David in war. Wasn't just, I'm sure, that, I, I, I'm sure they helped David in a general sense. But this passage specifically is. In fact, it begins in verse 1 by saying, these were the mighty men who helped him in war. The last part of the chapter, after it discusses some of their traits, including Issachar, it says in verse 38, all these being men of war. So this verse that talks about the need for discern, prophetic discernment is all about possessing the land. It's all about uh, prevailing over the, the enemy and accomplishing God's kingdom purpose in the earth. 
And this word for understanding the times is a Hebrew word that does something I really don't think we have an English word that can do. I've had, I've preached on this many times. I've probably preached on this here, and I'm not going to talk much about this. But the word is B-I-Y-N in Hebrew. Bin is how it would be pronounced. And it means not just prophetic revelation, understanding the times. It also means wisdom. This is a word that, that is very unique in the sense that it combines knowledge, wisdom. Wisdom is that which comes to us from the, the understanding and the knowledge we've gleaned in the past. And over time, that knowledge becomes wisdom, knowing how to apply it, what to do with it, how to counsel with it, etc. So it's based on understanding, but the other aspect of it, discernment, is based on revelation. It's what comes not from learning, but from Holy Spirit revelation. He's saying to us in this passage, if you're going to overcome, you have to have both. You must have a blend of wisdom and revelation. You can have lots of wisdom, but if you don't know how to navigate with Holy Spirit through a season, that wisdom can, can sometimes fail you. Because it's not enough just to know what to do. You have to know when to do it. You have to know when not to do it. You must understand the times. You must be able to tap in to not only what he taught you yesterday, but what he is saying to do with that today. This is one of the greatest weaknesses of the church. You can build somewhat on wisdom, but you can't win a war just on wisdom. You must have a combination of the two because, because wisdom won't tell you or show you what the enemy's doing. Revelation will. Discernment will. So, you know, I, 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 I don't want to get too bogged down in this because I could talk about this for a long time. But I remember when our, do when our girls were small. And sometimes, you know, all kids, you know, they, they are prone to disobey and they have to be trained and disciplined. But there were times when our kids, uh, you know, our, one or both of them, it might be going through a time where some rebellion was creeping up in their attitude and my wisdom was just to I know how to deal with this it's like what somebody said I brought you in this road I'll take you out or something like that. but I can recall on more than one occasion her saying to me I've been praying about this and I don't think this is rebellion I think there's something going on in her life and what we really need to do is pray and ask the Lord to show us how to deal with this and what's happening here. What's she going through? Who has said something to her? What's going on at school? She needs us to parent her right now, not just discipline her. And I can't think of a time when she said that it wasn't right. So that's an example of the marriage of wisdom and revelation. Now, even when we discerned and talked and we're, we're, we're able to get them to open up and share what's happening, there still had to be wisdom to know how to deal with it and approach it. But you have to have the two working together.